Hello and welcome back to my channel. This is Early Career Academic. On this channel, I talk about personal and professional goals and strategies for achieving them. In this video, I'm going to talk about digital decluttering. And this is um, certainly a planning and productivity related video, but it also leads up to the final uh, video in my research series for the month of January, which is to organize your digital files for research. Um, but before I can go into how I organize my digital files, I want to talk about the strategies that I implement for decluttering digital. I think um, as someone who straddled the pre-digital and post-digital era, I came around to these strategies kind of late in life, but it became apparent to me over time that I was letting the digital get away with, get, get away with itself. Um, it was just complete chaos in there, both in my computer and in my smartphones. And I needed to come up with ways to hold myself accountable to kind of keep that area tidy. And I think it's tempting for us to let the digital go because we can't see it. You know, we can close the laptop, we can put the phone away, and it's not like physical analog um, files or objects where they're very visible. I mean, but for us, that's the equivalent of hiding it all in the closet. Um, and it's not the best way to be able to locate the things you want to locate to achieve the things you want to achieve in a timely manner. If you don't have a system in place, what I like about the way that I organize my house, for example, is I know where everything is. You know, I am a, not a minimalist by any means, but it is organized. So I know where all the rubber bands are and I know where all I know where the snow boots are located. Um, and it's because I have assigned a specific place to them. Similarly, I want to have a system for that with the digital content um, that's on my smartphone and that's on my laptop. So in this video, I'm going to show you some clips of the way that I declutter in particular, and then hoping to have some additional videos about organizational systems, starting with the research organization video dropping this Wednesday. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I declutter my cell phone in particular. I think we can all uh, relate to having too many screenshots and so on and so forth and just some things that I do to kind of keep that tidy. And then I also am hoping to show you some of the way that I keep my digital files on my computer organized um, or at least some some decluttering strategies in specific in particular for this video. So I hope you find these helpful. I'd love to know in the comments, do you have additional strategies you implement for organizing your digital life or specific challenges or questions about what you see in this video? I would love to know in the comments. Also, if you're interested in this kind of thing and you wanna see more of it, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already. Okay, so I'm going to start with my images as most of you have, I'm sure. Um, excessive number of images that pile up over time um, just from taking screenshots and so on and so forth there's definitely a lot of um, miscellaneous things and then those things that I'm not deleting uh, for example out of screenshots like my friend sent me this um, bibliography that I should look into um, I do want to um, send it to myself so that I um, I'm sure to process it and put it in the right place, you know. Um, so then I can go ahead and delete that. I do keep some screenshots in here. Um, like I was keeping this um, calendar in here because it, it it was easier to like locate it when I needed it. Um, this is another resource that I might look into for my research. So it just helps to kind of like look back and see like, am I keeping this for a reason? Like I was thinking maybe of keeping this as potential content art. Um, so I'm gonna move it to content art. And that way, like if I'm ever looking for something for a blog or to share in my stories, like I can go there. And the rest of these things I, I use for other um, purposes. Um, and these all, I move images into these folders um, all the time, so um, I don't need to like take a look at that. This is my Canva images, and I definitely don't need, um, do I, need I don't need this one anymore. I just shared this one this morning, and I need the other ones for now. 
And then I go in and I delete old videos as well that I've created with my video editing app. And this was a screen recording like I'm doing now for a passion planner sale. Um, I'm going to move this picture of my mom and my grandma to my family folder so I can always find it. This is just a screenshot of a weather map that my brother sent me. Actually, it was my sister-in-law sent me. Um, and the rest are just personal pictures sorted into various categories. So I'm feeling pretty good about that. I do sometimes go into my camera and just take a quick look. I do have like stuff I've shared on my stories, things I don't really need. Um, planner shots and stuff. I don't need these, for example. I am making some videos right now, and so some of these clips that you see might be relevant to that effort, so I'm going to leave them in here for now until I have a moment to like really consider. And I have these that I made my um, snow day reel out of. But yeah, everything else is personal, and I will keep it for now. And that is it for um, looking through my photos. I do this pretty often, so it's not like a huge lift. Um, and then I just make sure to go into my settings and go to storage and just empty the trash. Because if I don't, it takes up too much space and sometimes I have issues filming new videos. <laughs> okay. Um, and then the last um, digital, well, not the last digital declutter thing, but we're getting toward the end, is I do come in to my clipboard because I copy a lot of links, like a lot. Um, and after a while, it just gets so convoluted that I like don't know what I like what's on my clipboard anymore. So I come in here and I just delete all the links. And then if there's something like I use a lot, I will come in and copy it. And then that way I know like what it is. Um, and mainly this is for like content and things. So I come in and I just get rid of that stuff on my clipboard. Um, and then the only other thing that I will take a look at is my app placement. Sometimes when the apps update, they shift around. Like, I don't know what this like, Samsung internet thing is, um, but I definitely don't need it on this page. I can like throw it on my page. Um, I probably need this zoom thing closer in here. I'll stick that there. Sometimes this is all my school stuff. Sometimes just stuff gets moved around when it updates. I don't really use Shutterfly a lot, but I still don't feel like it should be on this page. Probably should be near here pictures, right? <laughs> okay, so some stuff gets moved around. And that's pretty much it. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how I do a digital declutter. First, we're going to take a look at all these tabs I have open. Now, I just attended a, a conference and... Um, I, uh, I, I, re I received a lot of links in the conference chat and instead of saving them somewhere, you know, to be determined, so I didn't break my concentration from that presentation, I just opened them. So now I need to know, I need to make some decisions about which, where I want to put these links. If I want to save them somewhere, where should I save them? Maybe this is your situation too. You have a lot of tabs open in your browser. There are actual um, extensions that help you with this. I will try to put a link to some that I'm aware of in the description of this video. Um, but suffice it to say, there are electronic tools that help you capture this kind of information. For me, I'm a little more um, streamlined, a little more analog, I guess, in my approach. Really, what I want to do is look at each of these links outside the context of the presentation and the conference and ask, do I want to save this link? And if so, where is the best place to save it so that I can find it again or apply it to a specific project? 
Now I actually have two links um, side by side here that are in connected to each other, the Electronic Literature Lab and the Electronic Literature Organization. I am interested in the topic of ELIT, and I think the best place to put these is actually in my bibliography with a, for a specific writing project that I'm working on so that when I go to work on that project again, I will see these links in my TBR list and it will help remind me to take a look at what they have. If I need to do anything with it, if I need to sign up for something, if I need to like persist with that. So I can close these now that I have these saved. Um, these are other resources having to do with digital activism. So I do have a place in my bibliography for this information. And I can come back to that at a later time. And I think if I'm not mistaken, all of these other tabs are potential publications for my book project. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to open my drive and I'm going to open my project spreadsheet. My old stuff. I'm going to add a tab here. And I'm going to create a list of publishers, which you should have anyway. My approach to this has been incredibly haphazard. But if you're an academic, you should absolutely have a list of publishers who could potentially publish your work at some point. Um, and a couple of pieces of advice while I'm doing this. I have received excellent advice from published friends of mine that you should take a quick look at the publications, recent publications, and their series in particular. And then that way you can check to see if they publish the kind of thing that you're interested in. Um, so it's best to kind of make sure that you are keeping an eye out because some publishers only publish in certain disciplines or only in certain time frames or what have you. And um, you don't want to come to the publisher and say, hey, will you publish this thing that doesn't fit at all with your publication's mission? And that's not to say that sometimes they are looking to branch out a little, and you could always approach it that way, but you're more likely to get where you're going, get where, you're, get where you want to go if you are choosing a publisher which has, um, a, which, which has publications that align with your publication. So there we go. Now I have simplified my tabs. That's the first thing that I wanted to do. Um, I also want to show you all a tool that I use on, the, on a regular basis to manage my links, okay? Um, let me see if I can remember my password. Okay. So I use this app called Pocket, and it is an app on my phone, and it's also I can log in here on the computer, as you can see. And what I love about it is anytime I see a link, you know, looking through social media or through a web search or in a document, email or what have you, and I think to myself, that's a cool thing I want to save for some future purpose. I just have to grab the link open the app and it asks me, do you want to save this link in here? And I say, yes. And so this is a great link collection tool. In fact, I could have taken all of those tabs in my browser just now and popped them into this tool to go process later, but I actually have existing places like this bibliography um, to, to put those things um, or this sheet, which would be an easier way for me to keep track of which publishers I've talked to and um, what they've said about my project. So I could pop the links in here too, though, which as you can see, I make ample use of this. I pop links in here all the time. And so every so often, probably monthly is a good it's, monthly is my ideal amount of time, but at least semesterly, I come into this pocket app and I take a look at these links and decide, am I going to keep this link? Am I going to put it somewhere else? Why did I save this link? And sometimes I even leave, I have left notes for myself um, or added tags to these links to help me determine like what the link was for. Um, but often I can tell just at a glance what I had saved it for and then have to make some decisions about where these go. So this is one of my decluttering rituals, going through the pocket app and seeing if there's anything in here that needs to be moved or can be moved to kind of declutter this. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now.
Okay, so now I've reached the point in my Pocket app where I've, I'm at links that I keep in here so that they're handy. In other words, I often send them to people and I like having them in this app ready to go for me to be able to easily share them. So I am uh, pretty much squared away with my Pocket app. The next thing that I want to take a look at is my Google Keep. Um, I sometimes just like make random lists to keep track of stuff. Like this was clearly something, don't know what it is now, but you know, this kind of thing clutters up my, my keep list. And, you know, I just like to come in here and make sure that there's nothing that I can, I can't just like get rid of. Um, like I don't need, I actually do want to keep that. I have this saved somewhere already, so I don't need that. And then the rest of these are just things I use on a regular basis or like a list that I'm keeping track of. This is actually pretty tidy because I've recently tidied it. So there's not a lot to be done here, but I go into my notes app and just move anything that needs to be moved and delete anything that needs to be deleted. So that's pretty up to date. Um, while we're here, I just wanna say that another thing you might do, and I would do if I hadn't just done it, is clear your cookies and your cached data. And that has the unfortunate side effect of logging you out of all of your accounts. Um, but it's good to come in and do that every so often or set up your browser to do that every so often because cached data and cookies can cause a lot of issues. They can make websites stop functioning. They can drive up prices on things that you're looking at. If the price can be variable, like airplane tickets is a good example. If you've been searching airplane tickets for some time, clear your cookies you know, or your cached data or open an incognito browser so that, so that the airline doesn't know that it's you coming back because they will drive up prices that way. Um, but also just for your own security, um, clear those cookies, man. Cookies sound delicious, but they are not helpful to you, certainly. Um, they're helpful to companies, but they're not helpful to you. So that's what I would do now if I hadn't just cleared all my cache data and cookies. Um, I've already done that. But if you are interested, if you're in, if you're using a Google Chrome interface, um, you just come up here to this a little toggle and you click more tools, clear browsing data, and then just make sure that you have selected the cached images and cookies options and then click clear data. So that is your digital literacy lesson for the day. Um, now I wanna take a look at my email inbox here and just make sure that I'm being on top of, like I, I'm not one of those zero inbox type people, like I don't need to have an empty inbox every single day. Um, but I do want to make sure that if I, for example, email myself something, that I am capturing it somewhere that it needs to be so that I can find it again and not like misremember where it is. So let's just take a look at this first thing that I sent myself. So I sent myself this list that a friend forwarded to me. And these are some readings that I might um, actually find valuable. And so um, what I would need to do is I would need to um, capture the citations for these and pop them into my bibliography, which I will do, just not on camera. And this one is another resource that I'm thinking about reading. Um, so I'm actually gonna go ahead and uh, jot that down in my TBR while we're looking at it. Just make sure I'm in the right part of my bibliography. Okay. Okay, so the rest of these emails I keep in here all the time because I use them for a variety of things, so we can move on from this. The next thing is to take a quick look at my digital files, okay? Um, so if you've watched, let's see, yes, coming up this Wednesday will be a video about how I organize files for research. And in it, I go into some of my strategies for specifically organizing um, academic research and writing. But every so often I do like to come into these main folders up here and just make sure that there aren't a ton of miscellaneous documents that I accidentally threw in there for one reason or another. And just to make sure that my organization system is functioning. So that's what I'm gonna do now. looking pretty good. Again, I just went through it not too long ago. So, um, and the final thing that I'm going to take a look at here are my, is my desktop. Now this, it's been a while since I've looked at, so 
there's probably going to be some like pausing and thinking just to make sure that I'm not deleting anything too important. Um, but this is a good opportunity to take a look and see, like, do I need these things on the desktop for some reason? Um, do I need the shortcut here? Like, is there a way I can simplify this to make it look, you know, just more streamlined? Like, I'm not a zero inbox person, but I will say probably the one way in which I'm kind of picky is I like my desktop to look cleaner than it does now. So that's what I'm going to do. That's much better. Everything on here now has a function. It's a shortcut to a program that I use all the time, or it is, uh, in these cases, the podcast recordings folder. I, I absolutely want to leave there because I put some pretty like high, um, some pretty big files, audio files, and I leave them in that folder until I upload them. And also I'm placing um, some materials that we need for our adoption application in this folder. They're just PDFs of like the course modules, certificates as we complete them. And until I combine them all into the application, they're just gonna live there for now. But I'm feeling much happier about the status of my desktop. Thanks for watching. I hope you found some of the wisdom in this video to be helpful to you or inspirational to think about your own methods and strategies for decluttering your digital life. Again, I would love to know in the comments, do you have other strategies for organizing your digital life or other challenges you want me to tackle? I'd love to know. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already and stay tuned for some more awesome productivity and academic research related content. Thanks.